Welcome to this Deep Lizard course on AI art with Stable Diffusion. My name is Chris and we are delighted to have you with us. In this lesson, we're gonna get an overview of the current state of AI art. We're just gonna talk about AI art a little bit. And then we're also going to discuss diffusion models and stable diffusion in particular. So we're just gonna to touch on those topics in this lesson. So the first thing I wanna look at is what I'm calling the end of course project. And the end of course project is going to be the women of the world AI project that we created here at Deep Lizard. So this particular project called Women of the World is an AI art project that consists of 2,916 AI generated women from around the world in the likeness of Mandy from Deep Lizard. And if you know anything about Deep Lizard or you've been around for any period of time with Deep Lizard, you'll know that this is Mandy. So we're gonna talk more in depth about this particular project and how it was created in the next upcoming lesson. But for now, I do wanna just touch on it and show you or invite you to come watch the video if you haven't seen it already. So the way it works is this is an image of Mandy that I took and then I use Stable Diffusion to generate photos and I just want to show you I've slowed this down please play and there's actually music to it but you won't be able to hear it here but you will hear it if you watch this on YouTube and I just want to stop this in a few places and just have you see just how realistic most of these outputs look I mean this output for example this just looks amazing it it looks totally there's nothing that I can that I can see here that indicates that this isn't a real person but none of these people exist just play forward a little bit more now this one uh maybe is a little bit here but you can't really tell whether or not that's just something with the the makeup or not but anyway I encourage you to come and see this particular project for yourself so the reason that I'm calling this the end of course project is because throughout this course, we're going to be learning everything we need to know about stable diffusion in order to be able to generate something like this. Now, this is a pretty high level of sophistication. You have to know a lot of different things about stable diffusion to get this kind of quality output. And we will be learning everything we need to generate this along the way, we'll be generating other images in between. But by the end of the course, you'll be able to produce this project yourself using either the same input image of Mandy or one of one image that you choose. So with that little bit introduced, let's go ahead and jump to our next topic, which is going to be just a quick overview of generative AI and diffusion models. The future is here and AI art is taking the world by storm. People everywhere are typing in sentences known as prompts and getting back compelling images for the first time ever. Well, this is made possible by what is known as generative AI. So I'm here in the automatic 1111 interface where we have access to stable diffusion. Stable diffusion is a diffusion model that allows us to generate images given a text prompt. So I just want to show you what kind of images we can create and how easy it is. So here I have a sentence, a cool headshot of a beautiful dog. And what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace dog with all of these items here. Dog, cat, lizard, llama, alpaca, moon, man, and woman. And when we run this from the automatic love and love interface, this is what's returned. We get dog, cat, lizard, I really like that one. Uh, llama, alpaca, moon, man, and woman. This is amazing. These are all novel images that have never been seen before. These people here, they do not exist. That moon is a, <laughs> a novel moon. It probably, uh, I don't know. That moon doesn't exist. We have dogs, we have cats, we have lizards. We can ask for anything. And in fact, if we run this again, let's just see what we get. We're gonna get additional versions of all of these things. Let's see. All right, so dog, cat, lizard. Again, these lizards are coming in good. Oh, I like that llama there. And the man and the woman. And we can literally just continue generating and generating as many of these as we want. <laughs> just gonna do one last 
one last one. And now we finally get a funky lizard and so on. So these images are quite compelling for such a simple description. And this is, this is really powerful. We will, we will see there, this is going to enter so many areas of our society in terms of workflows, in terms of just image generation in general, this has never been able to be accomplished before. And now we can do it all for free using stable diffusion. So as we have said, the specific technology that is making this image generation possible is what is known as diffusion models. And at the time of the writing of this particular lesson, there are a few popular models that you may have heard of. The first one is stable diffusion. This is the one we're going to be using. And this one is the king of all of the other models at the current moment. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. Before we'll name the, the next two, the, this one is Dolly 2. This is created by OpenAI, and then we have Midjourney, which was created by uh, an organization that also shares this name, Midjourney Technologies, I believe. So I've referred to stable diffusion as being the king, or we can say that it's the most exciting diffusion model in this list. And this is because stable diffusion is freely available for all to use. And what this means, and or why this is possible, is due to the fact that the stable diffusion weights or what we call the models weights have been released into the wild and the use of the model is not gated or restricted by any central authority. So what is happening with Dolly 2, for example, is it's not free and it's also gated. There are certain things that you cannot create with Dolly 2. Same thing with Midjourney. It's controlled by an authority that dictates what its use can be. With stable diffusion, this is the model of the people. So you can put this model on your machine and you can do whatever you want with it. No, no central authority is gonna come and try to stop you or tell you how you should be creative, creative with this particular technology. So stable diffusion is in the wild and that means there's no turning back now. We can't somehow get rid of stable diffusion because it exists on millions and millions of computers. Some are calling for and fear the end of AI or <laughs> the end of human art because the AI art is going to take over. However, I couldn't think that this is further from the truth. And I believe that the truth is, is that generative AI art is going to empower human artists. AI art is going to allow especially solo artists to create things that simply weren't possible before. The Women of the World Project is a great example of this. I was able to get an image representation of Mandy from every ethnic group on the planet. That would be totally impossible for a solo artist. So in the past, before Stable Diffusion, if this idea popped into my head and I said, oh my gosh, I really want to create this piece of artwork, it would just be simply not possible for me to do so without really dedicating a lot of, I mean, I maybe I could dedicate my entire life to this or I could start a company, I could pay a lot of money, but with <laughs> stable diffusion, all of those problems go out the door and it opens up the creative possibilities. So with stable diffusion, we can give what is known as a prompt to the model, which we have seen. And then this text is used to generate an image that represents the prompt. And the important thing about this is, is that it allows us to get what we ask for. And so in the artificial intelligence field, we refer to this as text to image. So we're giving text as input and then we're getting an image as the output. Now, an important thing to note about stable diffusion is that the outputs we get from stable diffusion, they are novel outputs. So they've never been seen before. So if we get a, an image generated of a person, this per person most certainly does not exist. So how does this work? Well, the image is produced based on complex patterns that the model has previously extracted during the training process. So the model was trained on a data set of a very large data set of images. And from those images, it extracts uh, complex and generalizable patterns that then it's saved in its weights. So the, those patterns are represented in the network's weights that we downloaded and put on our computers. 
And when the training data set is very large, then the model is said to know more things or can know more things. In Stable Diffusion's case, the, the model knows a lot, uh, quite a bit. And the model can definitely tell us what different people from around the world look like. So as an example, we can give to Stable Diffusion a prompt that mentions a French woman, and we'll get uh, something that resembles a French woman back. Vietnamese, Korean, African, German, and so on. At this point, I just want to emphasize that this type of tool enables or opens up the creative, the creative possibility space. This is allowing us to create things that were previously impossible, as I've already mentioned. And the, the use of this tool is, is totally open, so we can use it to make anything that our imagination can dream up. So we know about, at this point, we know about text to image. We know that we can start with a, a text prompt, give that to Stable Diffusion, and get back an image. But there's another thing that we can do as well, which is start with an image and get back an image. And what we need to know about this, or the reason that this is possible, is due to the fact that when Stable Diffusion creates an image, it does so iteratively. So there's steps that it takes. And the way it works is that Stable Diffusion will start with some random noise as input, and then as it steps, at each step, it will move closer and closer to the prompt that, that it was given. And so it looks something like this. These are iteration steps from noise to image. So we see we start out here at step number two, and we have this kind of blurry image here. And this is representing noise, and as we move forward, we're moving closer and closer until by the step number 30, we have an image of a French woman. Let's see, yeah, the French. So this is a reason why we can start with our own image as input. Suppose, for example, that we were in this process and we said, okay, this is our image number 16. We could slide our image into the process here and then tell Stable Diffusion to continue from there and it would do so. Whenever we do image to image, we usually pair this with a prompt. And so technically this is referred to as text and image to image. But in general, we usually drop the text and we just say, oh, this is image to image. So in the automatic 11.11 UI and elsewhere, you'll see image to image referring to whenever we start with an image. But usually we're always going to have a prompt, a text prompt as well. So as an overview, we could start with an input image like this of Mandy and we could pair it with a prompt, Vietnamese woman, and we would get an output that this is resembling Mandy as well as a Vietnamese woman. So in this lesson, we have learned about the Women of the World project. We have realized that our goal throughout this course will be to gain the skills necessary to create the Women of the World project from scratch. We've learned about uh, diffusion models and the King model, stable diffusion. And we've touched on prompts that we pass into the model. And this is called text to image. And then we've also touched on using an image as input, which is referred to as image to image.